How's it going everybody? Nerds Rising here and welcome back to the Nerd Cave. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at some pretty fun battles of my first three days or so in the Evolution Cup. Now, if you've been playing the Evolution Cup, you know that Vigoroth is everywhere. Most people have Vigoroth, they're on the lead, they're in the back, they're on the safe swap, they're just everywhere and it's super strong and basically it can beat anything when it has a shield advantage. So. I was just seeing most of mine in the back and a lot of people like to save two shields for it and I was running some some spice early on and it just wasn't working out so I built this team with two very good Vigoroth answers in back just for the, the times when the opponent's trying to you know win basically by saving their shields for Vigoroth and this team does not let that happen. You see there on the left the uh, Machoke running double nuke as well as a, the Shadow Goldbat with Bite. Both are very strong against Vigoroth. And, um, I would say that the Machoke would benefit from knowing Cross Chop, but I really just didn't want to use the Elite Charge TM. So uh, we do have some fun nukes with the, the double nuke for sure, but Cross Chop would definitely be better overall. And the Bite as well on the Shadow Gold Bat, it, de if, it does help the Vigoroth matchup, but it also really helps the, the Ghost matchups. For example, a Hunter gets chomped down in like seven bites, which is pretty incredible. So uh, that being said, I did climb up about 175 points of ELO with this team. I got back to just about where I entered Ace uh, after falling quite a bit messing around in the Master Premier Cup. So uh, we're right about back where we started and uh, we are on our way to Legend one battle at a time. So without further ado, let's get into this footage and uh, there's some pretty fun battles in here. I think you guys are going to enjoy this. I know I certainly enjoyed doing it. So in the first match here, we're up against a Galarian Lanoon. So a pretty cool pick. Um, pretty risky by the opponent running something that's double weak to fighting, but uh, this thing does have access to Gunk Shot, so we have to respect this. Um, I do CMP tie them on a potential Gunk Shot after six Snarls. And we'll see if we can get a shield here, that'd be really nice. And the opponent does respect it with the shield, so I will shield myself. Uh, just because a Gunk Shot, even though it wouldn't KO, it would do quite a bit of damage. And unfortunately the opponent baits us there, so that's a little rough. So I will count up three more Snarls here, and we will try to catch the second Gunk Shot onto our uh, Shadow Gold Bat here. And hopefully this is not another bait, or that would be a little rough. And we do catch the gunk shot and that actually does a lot of damage anyway but still resisted damage is better than neutral damage so uh they bring in their own gold bat into the mirror here and you'll see here where, where bite comes in handy because look at the damage those bites are doing already that gold bat is almost at half health just from our bites so we should be able to get to a last second poison fang we do and uh another bite or two and this thing's going to be in the red health so uh bite definitely helps out in the gold bat mirror as well so here we're, we're just going to bring in our uh, Zwylus and farm down. We will have to take a Poison Fang, but uh, the opponent shouldn't be able to get to another one here. And I believe you have Poison Fang there, and we should just be able to farm down with Dragon Breath. And the nice thing also is that our Machoke doesn't have to fight Golvac now in the back, and Machoke does not want to see Golvac. So they bring in a Brion, and this is bad. That charm goes through on me, and it will probably get me very, very low. Um, but you'll notice there, when I right as I switched out, I banked a body slam. I threw one and I banked one. So now what I need to do is get this shield from the opponent and hope that my karate chops have gotten this this uh, Brion into a range where a body slam is going to KO. As we, we should win CMP if they're out of move. And it looks like they're not out of move and the charm goes through. So if this body slam doesn't KO, we go down. And I'm really hoping it does. And it does, just barely. And then uh, the Galarian Lanoon just threw that gunk shot so it shouldn't have any leftover energy. So we can simply just shield and farm all the way down with Dragon Breath, and that is going to be a good game one. Now, a little bit scary when that Brion uh, switched in, that that charm very well could have just KO'd my Zwylus, because it takes like four charms to KO a Zwylus, which is crazy. So, next battle here, we have an XL Knit Arena, so that is a super cool pick. This thing is pretty tanky and very spammy with that Poison Sting Poison Fang. So here we're going to be just uh, Dragon Breathing away. Um, they're probably just going to go straight Poison Fang here, and uh, this will add up over time. As you can see, one doesn't do a lot, but now our defense is debuffed, so... We'll hopefully be able to get a shield here, but... This thing has a decent amount of bulk, so I would be surprised if the opponent commits a shield. Yeah, and they let it go, and uh, they're actually building up quite a bit of energy. So here I was a little confused. Of, uh, they're not a Purified, so they're not going to hit me with Return. And they actually throw the uh, Resisted Thunderbolt there, which is the uh, new move that Knit Arena got this season. They bring in a, their own Machoke, and this is great. I will definitely be bringing my Golbat in here, but I do need to make sure that it's not Purified, and it's not. So, if this is a Purified Machoke, this would be a little scary for our Golbat, because Return nearly one-shots a, a Shadow Golbat. And uh, 
The bad thing about bite here is that this thing is resisting our bites, whereas a wing attack we could probably just more easily farm all the way down. So we are still going to commit to a farm down, but we're going to have to eat probably at least two double resisted fighting moves here. Uh, it's not too bad. You can see they don't do much, but uh, he's already got us below half health just from these double resisted moves. So unfortunately we don't, we just barely don't farm down. It looks like he lived on one HP there. So he's going to get off one final cross chop and we are in the red health now, which is pretty insane. Um, Machoke is, hits very hard as you can see. Um, they bring back in the Nidorino. I'm nearly at two Poison Fangs, and I, I want to get a Poison Fang off on whatever's in back, so I just throw right away. Don't want to risk him getting to another move. And there's a Vigoroth in the back, and we have a Machoke ready and waiting. It doesn't matter if he shields or doesn't shield, because if he shields, we'll just get to two moves. If he doesn't shield like he does there, we're just going to Karate Chop all the way down, and he's not going to get to three Body Slams here. And the opponent realizes it there, and he surrenders, so good game. The team is working like a charm in that battle right there. Uh, Vigoroth, two shields in the back, doesn't matter. So, good game. Um, I guess, ironically, the first game didn't even have a Vigoroth on the team, but, uh, you know, as I say that, it's everywhere. There's not going to be any, but you know how it goes. Um, one thing that this team does struggle against is a Vigoroth lead. Um, I did face quite a few, and I got better at playing it out as the game went on, but uh, I did lose quite a few Vigoroth leads. So, neutral lead here, Golbat into Zwilus. Um Again, similar to the Nidorina matchup, the longer we stay in here, the better it's going to be for the opponent after the debuffs. So my plan here is to take the first, farm up quite a bit, and throw a Dark Pulse right before they get to their second. Basically, uh, going to force a shield or KO, and then I'll try to catch their second Poison Fang on my own Golbat. So they should be one away here, and I do just barely make the catch there. So this will be resisted, this will be nice. Doesn't do a whole lot of damage, as you see there. And uh, now we're just going to commit to a Bite Farm Down, and, and it looks like they're not switching out. And they're actually going to throw another Resisted Poison Fang here, so I'm perfectly fine with that. I'll take that all day long. And now we're going to have some energy to throw out whatever's in back. What are they going to come in with here? It looks like they come in with a Vigoroth. Wow, who would have guessed? Like, a Vigoroth. Wow, very spicy. So we're going to throw a Poison Fang right away. And this is looking pretty good now. We have a, a very healthy uh, Zwyla still. Maybe not super healthy, but it has enough health left. And we also have a full health Machoke in back. So we're going to let this go. And we are going to put our trust in our Machoke with shields in the back here. Um, and they have a Duwat. So that's a super cool pick there. I have, I think this is the only one I saw. This thing knows Fury Cutter, X Scissor, and Aqua Tail. Um, we don't shield the first because we know we are resisting the Fury Cutters. So we don't have to worry about being farmed down. Um, but this thing is very, very spammy, and our Zwilus doesn't like to see those bug moves, so uh, we're going to throw our move here, and what I'm realizing I need to do here is I need a fighting move to take out this Vigoroth, because it still has a decent amount of health. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to build up to the Dynamic Punch, bank it, and then I'm going to switch into my Zwilus and try to take this thing out with a Body Slam. So we switch in, I know I'm going to have to give up the shield here, probably will be an X-Scissor, but since I had a little bit of residual energy, I should just barely be able to outpace this thing to a body slam before it gets to another X-Scissor. If I don't, it's game over, but I just barely do. And now it doesn't really matter if the opponent comes in and farms down here, because Machoke has the dynamic punch loaded, and Machoke is easily going to win CMP versus the Vigoroth. So, um, good game there to the opponent. Uh, they played it out as best as they could, but we just had a, a really good matchup in the back. Sorry, there was a bug flying in my face. So good game there. Um, you can see again, people with Big Ross in the back, this team just really handles them nicely. So, what do we have Gas Monkey in the next battle here? And it looks like they have a Big Roth lead. Now this, this can be a little tricky guys, so we're going to switch into our Golbat. I, I was hoping really that this this team with the Bite Golbat would, some ghosts would auto swap in, seeing you know the type advantage, but uh, that really didn't happen as many times as I would have liked. But uh, we're in the mirror here and I know that Vigoroth is so strong that if I give up shields here, Vigoroth can actually beat my Machoke in back since I'm not running cross chop. So what I'm going to do here is just try to get shield advantage, and the opponent actually shields the very first Poison Fang, so probably just unfamiliar with the counts, maybe thought it was already at a Shadow Ball. Um, and this is fine, we're going to get this low, and we're just going to let our Golbat go down and take shield advantage. We'll come in here with our Zwilus. I'm hoping since he's debuffed he won't be able to get to another Poison Fang, but he very likely will. But that's alright, we'll take the first. Um, one Poison Fang really doesn't do a whole lot of damage. It's more about those debuffs over time that make it such a good move. 
So we'll tank this, and he definitely won't be able to get to another here. So we're looking okay. We've got shield advantage. We just have to hope they don't have a really solid counter to Machoke and back. And since their Golbat's gone, the only thing I'm going to be worried about really is like a Haunter or a Dusclops. And they've actually got his Wireless in the back, so they were double weak to my Machoke. And this Dynamic Punch, if it goes unshielded, will absolutely destroy this poor Zwilus. And the opponent does. He lets it go and it one-shots. Maybe trying to call a cross chop there. And now we've got two shields. Um, we are at kind of a, a sketchy health range um, to the point where the opponent may actually be able to counter us all the way down before we get to two Dynamic Punches. Because it takes a little while for Machoke to get to these, these hard-hitting moves. So... Uh, Hopefully that's not the case, but we'll have to see how the opponent plays it. We do shield there, and we get his last shield. And now the opponent makes a very nice play. He realizes he can counter down, and he does counter me all the way down. But fortunately, our Zawila still has a good amount of health left, so we should be able to tank one Body Slam and then shield the second and Dragon Breath down before he counters us down. So he does have two, but he doesn't have three. That's the important thing. So we are going to be able to Dragon Breath down here. And that is going to be another sad Vigoroth waiting in the back. Actually, no, that one was on the lead, I, I lied. But uh, yeah, Vigoroth leads are tough, very tough. I think that might have been one of my few wins. So, uh, all right, next battle, Haunter. Good matchup for us, and he switches into his own Dino. Since I'm ahead on energy here, I'm gonna go ahead and get my Body Slam off, and if he shields, I will bail out of here into my Machoke, which is what I'm hoping he does. He does shield perfect, so. Since there's a Haunter on the lead, our Machoke has very little play. So I'm going to just fully sacrifice the Machoke, commit to a fast move down, and if he gets the two moves, I will just let my Machoke go. Because I'd rather take shield advantage, because both of my back mons do very well against that Haunter. And what I don't want to have happen is throw that move after I get it, and then have the Haunter come in and farm me down. Because the Haunter with an energy lead can handle my Zwilus and my Golbat. So I give up shielded or switch, but I take shield advantage. And now I know that the opponent has seen I have Bite. And he's not going to want to bring that Haunter in, so uh, we're going to th see his third Mon. And I'm just assuming it's a Vigoroth, because it almost always is. And sure enough, it's a Vigoroth. <laughs> I just always assume when I'm in that situation where I haven't seen their third, I'm just like betting that it's going to be a Vigoroth. Some very strong odds it's going to be a Vigoroth. So we take the first Body Slam. We'll throw a Poison Fang. And I'm expecting him to probably switch out right after this debuff goes through. Um, so does he actually do that? Yes, he does. So... I throw a couple bites there and I save enough health on my Golbat to where I should be able to bite down the Vigoroth in the back and not have to worry about um, the double resisted counters farming you down. So we bring in our Zwilus knowing that we can easily farm down this Haunter. And the Vigoroth is so low that our, our fast move now at this point will just take it out. Um, here I make a little bit of a mistake. I wasn't going to get to two moves. There was no reason really for me to throw a, uh, a move here. I should have just committed to the fast moves because when you do that, when you throw a move, you risk the opponent sneaking through a move, and that could have been the difference in him getting to like two body slams, say, but uh, we take the win, and uh, a good game there to another Vigoroth in the back. So this, this is a very difficult lead, because this thing beats our Zwilus, and it beats our Golbat, so we have to stay in here, unfortunately. But the opponent makes a bit of, mis of a mistake here. He throws after seven, so I know this cannot be an Aurora Beam, because an Aurora Beam would be eight Powder Snows. So I wait here, He's now at the back-to-back -back body slams, and I see him tie him here with a Dark Pulse. Really hoping he lets this go. And he does, but it doesn't KO, unfortunately. Celio is very, very bulky, yeah. But he does throw energy here, so this is okay. Um, at least our gold bat's not going to have to face this in the back. We just have to hope that um, switch advantage here isn't super important. Like, say they had a Dust Clops and our Machoke was going to end up getting lined up with it or something like that. And uh, they actually have a Hunter, which is really bad. Um, but he stays in there, you'll notice. He stays in there for a little bit. And let's just get him to just about above half health. And here, this is a tricky situation because Shellgun's a pretty bulky dragon. And I'm realizing that I'm not going to be able to farm him down with enough HP to take out this Haunter. So you'll see me make a really interesting play here. I'm actually going to pause it because I want to talk about this play here. So uh, you'll notice here, I actually stop. Let's, let's rewind it for just a second. I promise I'm not always going to do that, guys. But this is a, a kind of... A play here that's uh, pretty important in winning this game. So we see that we're not going to be able to dragon to bite this thing down before it dragon breasts us down. So you'll see me about right up here. I, I actually stop attacking because I don't want to sh take this Shellgun out um, and then basically have my uh, my the Haunter come in and farm down my Golbat. As I know this Machoke at this point is going to have to take out this Haunter.
and it's it's about half health and a return actually does about half on a hunter so what i need to do here is leave enough health on the shell gun to where my machoke can farm it down and get an energy lead on that hunter because i need to get to two returns before he gets to three shadow punches or ice punches so i stop attacking and there's actually a little bit of visual delay where it looks like the opponent also stopped attacking but he didn't so now we have enough health to farm down and i think the opponent actually there might have been toying with me thinking that i had given up but i actually meant to do that so now as you see we have an energy lead and all we need to do is get the two returns here before this hunter gets to three moves um it's going to be close because these shadow claws are going to add up um there i didn't risk a bait just because i knew a dynamic punch wouldn't ko um so we I believe he's now at back to back. Um, so we basically just need to get, as long as the game works correctly and we sneak through our karate chops as he throws, and we do, then we should be able to outpace this thing to our second move. So, um, and we just have to hope that this return actually does KO because it is going to be double resisted. But Haunter is notoriously frail. So please, God, KO. We, <laughs> we lose this game if this doesn't KO. And it, it does. So a pretty crazy win there. Um, if I would have just. Taking out that shell gun with my gold that I would have lost that game. So uh, next battle here, we have a Dragonair. So pretty neutral. Um, Swilus is slightly bulkier, but uh, Dragonair would win CMP. And guess what? He switches into a Vigoroth. Who would have guessed? So we bring in our gold bat here. Um, since we switched a bit late, we will have to commit a shield in order to win this matchup. And maybe even two, but I will not go down two shields. To, so I will basically, uh, if it comes to the point where I'm going to have to give up a second shield, I will just let my gold bat go. So we'll shield this one. Actually, we don't shield it, and we live with one HP. Wow, what a read. That was risky. In watching this in retrospect, I did not think my gold bat was going to survive that. I must have just had a sixth sense at the moment. Um, so we, we do get off our move, and that gets this Vigoroth very low. And we will probably come in and farm down here, I'm guessing with Umbridge Choke. But looking back, I probably should have tried to make a play for Switch there, because if he has a Ghost type in the back, Umbridge Choke's going to be in, a big, in big trouble again. Let's see what he comes in with. He comes back in with a Dragonair, so that's good. That means he may not have a hard response to Machoke. So with that in mind, we will throw our move and then dip out of here to hopefully line up our Machoke with whatever's in back at the end. And he actually has a Dustclop, so I'm not sure why the opponent didn't bring in the Dustclops to the Machoke. He would have just won the game if he did that, because there's nothing that Machoke can do to Dustclops. Machoke is very glassy and Dustclops is super bulky and the opponent doesn't shield he knows i have a machoke in the back and he doesn't shield the dark pulse so maybe he thought i was baiting there uh but but wow knowing that i have a machoke in the back you would have thought he would want to protect his uh his Dustclops there now it's just a matter of our Zwilus doing enough dragon breath damage to this thing to where our machoke can take it out and it looks like i don't even shield this um probably saving the shield for the machoke knowing that i'll probably get this last shield here and let's see, if the opponent doesn't shield this, it might get a little tricky, uh, but he does. So now we're just going to save our shield for Machoke and hope that Machoke can withstand the, the Dragon Breast long enough to get to a move. And it looks like the opponent realizes he needs to farm down, and we do just barely get to that Dynamic Punch. Again, this is a situation where Cross Chop would be really nice. But but wow, I'm not sure why the opponent would bring back in a, their Dragon when they have a Dust Clops. That, that's like the hardest counter, basically, to uh, a Machoke in the game, So or at least in this meta. But anyway, oh, well, looks like I accidentally paused our background too. <laughs> we'll get that going again. So we've got a Porygon 2. What a spicy pick. Uh, this thing is very spammy and knows try attack and it can know nukes like Blizzard, Zap Cannon. Um, so we'll farm up here. It looks like he's throwing the try attack right away. So I know I don't have to shield this. It was too quick to be a, like a big move. And we do get debuffed. So instead of throwing my move after debuff, being debuffed, I'll bring in the gold bat here. Um, and save that energy for later when I'm not debuffed. Um, it looks like we are going to shield here. Probably another try attack Yeah, it is, but um, we didn't want to risk a, a big move there. And we can hopefully farm down, and we do just barely farm down. So um, that Porygon's out of the way, which is nice. Um, I'm thinking they probably have a good answer to fighting in the back, though, since, the, since they had a, something very weak to fighting in the front. Um, what did they come in with? I didn't see a Dustclop. So this is a little bit sketchy. Um, yeah, I, I think... I think here I make a bit of a mistake. I probably should have shielded that gold bat to get off some more bite damage. Because now our Zwilus is pretty low and it may just just about be in uh, Ice Punch range. But he actually gives up switch here. So this is huge. If he would have just done one more move and farmed us down, our Machoke would have not been aligned with that Vigoroth. But since he gave up switch, our Machoke now has some play. 
and we can actually use it to take out this big rock. So that's huge. So the opponent is helping us out here. A couple opponents have been helping us out. I'm not expecting him to shield now. I'm expecting him probably to put it on, put it all on his Dusclops. And he does let it go, so that's nice. But now our Zwilus has a lot of work to do. I'm thinking he's got a lot of energy. I'm probably going to have to bait to win. So I'll shield this Ice Punch here, and I'm going to have to try to bait and then land a Dark Pulse. So hopefully, I'm, I'm hoping, I'm praying to the gods, please, please shield this. And the opponent is a savage, and he calls my bait. So I'm thinking at this point, the game's over. I'll, I'll try to bait again, um, just to prevent him from over farming. I, I feel like he kind of has to shield this, but... He's just about at two moves, I believe. Uh, maybe not quite at two moves, but um, I'm thinking maybe, maybe our Machoke has just enough health to get to a move before he gets to his. And I believe they are now one away. Is a, pro, or excuse me, a double resisted dynamic punch going to KO here? Barely it doesn't. On one HP, we karate chop down. I did not think that I was going to win that game. I thought for sure... I thought for sure it was over, um, but I guess our, our choke is a, a ghost counter, in fact, so uh, pretty awesome. Uh, is this the la I believe this is the last game. Yeah, I believe this is the last game. Uh, another Dragonair lead here. Um, so we've seen this before. Uh, it's a little neutral. Zwilus does uh, lose CMP, but it is a little bit bulkier. Um, and the opponent actually doesn't throw right away, so this is great. Um, I'm going to get this off first and put the pressure on him to make the first shielding decision here. And he does shield, so uh, basically... Um, if I get a shield, I will let my Zwilus go down and just take a shield advantage for my back mons because my back mons are pretty strong when they have shield advantage. Um, not too many things can can beat a gold bat very comfortably with uh, shield advantage. So we come in with gold bat, we farm down, and I'm, I'm feeling pretty good about this game, but the opponent has a spicy, shiny Alolan Graveler, and this game is now over. As you see, we are aligned on a Dusclops, and... This Dusclops, unlike the last one, is very healthy. And our poor Machoke here has nowhere to hide. Um, look at that return. That is a, a laughably small amount of damage. Um, so switch advantage with everything in this game. Uh, because the opponent committed a shield on the lead and won switch, he was able to line his ghosts under our Machoke and his Alolan Graveler onto our Golbat. So I knew as soon as I saw that, that it was over. But out of respect for the opponent, I was like, you know what? I'll stay in and, you know, give him the satisfaction of of beating us. So I'm going to play it out. I'm thinking maybe somehow if I can farm down um, and not have to shield the second move, I'll be able to bite down. But I'm just knowing that he's going to get to another move here. And yeah, he does. So we'll shield it and we'll let the, the Alolan, the shiny Alolan Graveler take us out here in the end. So uh, a good game to the opponent. He just had us hard countered. I think I actually, yeah, I actually, I stopped the recording there because I, I believe I surrendered. So I know I said in the last video that you never should surrender, but there are times where you know it's over and it's okay to surrender. But uh, anyway, that being said, guys, thank you again for watching. Um, I promise I won't always have long pauses in my videos. There's just times where I really want to kind of break things down and explain why I did something that might seem crazy. Um, but anyway, again, thank you for watching. And if you are enjoying this content, please subscribe to the channel. It will really help me get my videos out to more people. And the more people we get our videos out to, the more Pokemon my wife will let me play. So with that being said, I will see you guys in the next one.